Hey you folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Europe Universalis 4 as the Netherlands, and we are introducing the Res Publica DLC to our game at this point, which is great for the Netherlands. It's sort of the reason I've been holding off for a little while to see that. Also, I still sort of kind of feel like we've already won the game, but well, we'll see what happens, because right now we are still in a situation where we are 130% overextended, and we don't really have any admin power. We did start a bunch of cores, though, uh, so that's fine. Uh, we didn't get our, our one started in Barra, but other than that, we just got to, uh, we've got to wait about three years for things to, uh, to finish coring, so we'll see how it goes. So, new expansion, we are playing a Republic, specifically the Dutch Republic, which has a different and unique mechanic. We have two factions, the Statists versus the Orangists. The Orangists are more sort of a monarchy-oriented thing, while the Orangists are in power. Our current ruler will continue to rule until his or her death, but if the statists are in power, then there will be an election every four years. I think I personally want to lean towards the Orangist. Now, the downside of being full Orangist, uh, well, the positive side is you get cheaper stability costs and you get a higher land force limit, which is cool, but you lose one Republican tradition per year, and that's, you know, that, that can certainly add up. Um, and on the flip side, on the status side, you gain Republican tradition. You also get global trade power and naval force limit modifier. So frankly, what we're de generally trying to do for our strategy with trade and whatnot, uh, certainly would make sense to keep the statists up. Um, and actually, with this... Uh, Stability cost modifier, the stability being cheaper, that's not really going to offset the increased stability cost from having a low Republican tradition. So, uh, ooh, it is tough because I would like to have, you know, persistent rulers, I guess, because it's quite handy. But, um, I don't know. It is kind of weird that we're moving away from the sort of monarchy if we go to the status thing. Uh, the status status? Probably status. But I think it's a lot stronger for us if we go that way. Also, I've been talking for a long time about flipping to Reformed. I just, I'm, I'm going to drop that idea. Uh, a, the Reformed, while I still haven't gotten to play with the Fervor buttons, really doesn't make sense in our game uh, for lots of reasons. Also, I know my fonts changed. Uh, the uh, mod I was using hasn't quite been updated for 1.7 yet, so... Uh, I have to go back to the teeny tiny little fonts instead of the nice, thick, interesting ones and also the teeny tiny little diplomacy window uh but hopefully we'll get that back soon enough so um so i think i'm gonna stay catholic and i'll probably have to um stay on the status side status side of it there uh we do have a new decision available to us uh the de heretico Camburendo act i don't think that was there before uh, it'd been level 6, we would have taken it ages ago. It gives us 2% higher national tax modifier and stronger uh, missionary strength, which is great. It does increase Catholicism reform desire, uh, but I think that's going to be totally fine. And frankly, I like the higher tax rate, and the missionary strength is going to help us quite a bit. We're still trying to do some conversions over here, so we may as well pass that and uh, try to increase the conversion rate. And that's going to be okay. And yeah, we'll probably start just flipping everything over the Catholics. So last episode, which was a while ago, so I was trying to catch up myself. It does look like we ate most of uh, Portugal or some of Portugal and then some bit in the uh, in Africa. Uh, where was that? Where were all those things? Um, Tyrol. I took Tyrol from Austria, apparently. All right, so we've got ourselves a gold mine. We're expanding over that way. And yeah, oh, the Grain Coast, Cameroon, that sort of thing. So... Nice little bit of capturing there. Let's go ahead and unpause it and at least play it up to speed too. There we go, and we get our first event. So we got a battle against some um, some natives. Mainz is canceling access. Military coalition shouldn't be a surprise. Various trade disputes, more coalitions. Totally not a surprise. So election of the Republic. So we can elect a statist, statist candidate. A 366. Strengthen status by 33. Or an orangist, a 552, strengthen oranges by 33. Well, um, holy cow. These are some pretty good rulers. Now, the thing is, objectively, uh, Frederick here is the better ruler. He's got a total of 15 stats, whereas this guy over here only has a total of 12 stats. On the other hand, I quite like having a bit more admin. We're a bit behind on admin tech. Uh, it'd be nice to get another idea. But... And we're, we're really ahead on military tech as well. Uh, so the fact that this is lower in military actually doesn't hurt us quite as much. I was talking about going status, but part of me wants the extra two points in admin. Oh, well, here's another thing we can do. You know what? Let's let's take status because we were talking about doing that. 366. There he is there. So we're sliding over that way. As long as they're in power. So it's not like um, 
it's not like the religious, like when you're playing a Sunni, for example, and you've got the religious sort of slider going on here. It seems absolute. If one's in power, you just get this. It's not like a fraction. We're not getting, you know, 1.25 global trade power increase. It's just the flat plus five, which is interesting to see. Um, but the other thing, what was I just thinking? There was something else I was... Oh, right, the power points. I want to be able to focus. I'm going to focus on administrative power. Blam. Like that. Uh, just because we need to finish coring that last thing, and also it would be nice to catch up in admin tech, mostly because I, another idea would be nice. We always, we're always we still suffering from the fact that um, our expansion ideas switched to an administrative power instead of diplomatic power partway through, which sort of messed up our costs a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to go and chill just a little bit on um, some of our uh, expansion stuff at this point, just to, I don't know, try to keep things up. A little bit more modest here we do have to reduce our overextension and of course like just in general because everything is crazy also it would be nice to keep the the um our trade power which goes down with overextension i know and i keep saying that and i'm like no maybe i should go and invade all the things but maybe this will be the time when i finally do things so i'm just reorganizing a couple of my trade fleets over here again my trade power is quite low right now but we're still making over 125 ducats per month right now that is at full military maintenance for both that is despite the fact that uh yeah my trade in different places like if i go and click on uh it's like lubeck over here we only have four percent of the trade and why is that if we check the hansa we've got a what do we not do we no longer get a penalty to trade from being overextended wait what Maybe, like, and when I first loaded the save, it was telling me I was only making, like, I don't know, 40 ducats a month. I, what? That wasn't in the patch notes. Trade power abroad, 130%. Less. Um, is because I've got land? Like, let's go and see. Um, I'll, I'll deal with these pop-ups in a second. What about way over here? Oh, wait, I was looking at the Hansa. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused because I'm still playing the Hansa game. Uh, <laughs> I am playing as the Netherlands, of course. There we go. Okay. Sorry, I've got an, another EU4 game going on right now <laughs> where I'm playing as the Hansa, so. Uh, we need to reset our rivals. Left the coalition. Well, that's interesting. So who can we uh, rival at this point? Great Britain. Okay, that's fine. Austria. Oh, it said France is no longer uh, eligible, but it still certainly seems to be. Um, so we will probably... I think we'll still set France. Um, and realistically, we should at some point tangle with the Ottomans, but in the short term, um, I think what I'll do is I'll keep going for easy powers like Portugal, uh, because we can go and kick their butt. They have rivaled us, so we can rival them is, I think, the deal. Uh, Austria would also be quite fine, but I think if we're going to grab anything, it's going to be finishing up this coast at some point, so we'll go and do that. Not to mention there might be some overseas stuff that we're interested in grabbing. Uh, arrived in Tyrol. We don't have oh we still have some black flagged people oh they're all organizing over there we've been embargoed i should check the embargoes left the coalition france announced portugal as arrival we converted some heretics left the coalition all right well thanks for leaving the coalition i appreciate that yeah so we're gonna go and flip these reformed over to catholic it's actually gonna help us quite a bit if we get a bit more religious unity and that's been long enough um let's merge you up whoa yeah we have no manpower i'm gonna go ahead and consolidate just in case we do get some rebel uprisings, that way our front lines are not completely stupid. We gotta let that go. We still have a mission? Reduce overextension. I like it. I, we don't need the diplomat, but I think it's there to just remind me that, hey, uh, maybe you should stop being stupid. Hey, we get a new fort for free. Lost some rivals. Did they unrival me? No, France. France is at me set as an enemy, so they are a valid target. Portugal has me set as an enemy, so they are a valid target. Don't do this thing where you let me set it, and then it automatically unsets constantly. That is very frustrating. Mm, okay, I think we're just... Uh, I think we may have been reorganizing a few of our troops at some point and lifting them off of here, but I don't see any reason to move them out. We still got our cogs there, uh, and I think there's a few more on the way. I actually would quite like to grab Mutapa as soon as our overextension is done. They have no allies. No one is going to care if I go and kick their butts, so it's going to be fine. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, fine. Just to stop being annoying, let's go ahead and rival Austria then. And that's enough to get rid of my you have, uh, you don't have enough people 
So, because I'd rather not lock in the Ottomans quite yet. But that's really annoying. It does the same thing when someone's in like a personal union or a vassal or something like that. It keeps deselecting them, but it should not be doing it in this case. That's really frustrating. Okay, let's check our embargoes because we don't want to embargo someone who's not our rival, like France. Even though we do want to. Just because that reduces our trade power um, in really annoying ways. Whereas we could embargo Austria. Oh, there's a demand of unlawful territory from Austria. No, sorry, won't do it. And I can't embargo you while we have a truce. That's, that's a new little display, having this information here. It's quite handy. Yeah, can I still do royal marriages, actually, is the question. While I've got... Uh, well, apparently I can. Oh, this window is so small and tiny. Uh, I think it's time... Oh, yeah, I was going to go and clear out this... Um, this siege, but it seems to be happening anyway. Uh, I was going to integrate Armagnac. Lost to CB. Portugal announced France. Portugal left the military. Why are they leaving the military coalition against me? Maybe they just got their butts kicked too much. They'll probably go back in, because if we take a look at the coalition map mode... Like, there's no way they don't hate me to the max. 97 is actually not so bad. And then these guys are actually in the coalition. A coalition that I could easily fight. But I want to reduce overextension. And I want to play the trade game a bit more. We're making serious bank. Oh, now drop back down a little bit. We'll see how this uh, stabilizes soon enough. But yeah, I was going to say, um, I'm going to go ahead and integrate some of my vassals. So, um... I guess I can check this screen. Right, and I should probably increase my tariffs overseas. Not that these are huge nations, but we should probably do that. Um, okay. Check the diplomatic map mode. That'll be the easiest way. I'm going to leave Tunisia as a vassal simply because uh, the distance overseas stuff. So actually, all this stuff too could be released into... Um, a Morocco or something like that. But I think part of the idea here was also to make it possible to put claims on Algiers. Again, not necessarily super powered, uh, because the distant overseas does hurt the tax base. But it's still something. Like, we could arguably get more if we release this as a as a vassal. Um, so yeah, Amagnac and... Oh, Baden! And Granada. So, oh, annexation will cost a total of 120 power points. That's a nice little display boost. Um, let's just improve relations. And improve relations in Nanamaniac as well. And I think we have an extra one too. Here. Let's improve relations everywhere. We'll tie up all of our diplomats, so that's okay. I have an extra merchant kit that's not assigned somewhere. Really? Um... We could help pull more from Novgorod or from the Baltic Sea into Lubeck, but we don't have enough control over Lubeck to really make that make any sense. Uh, it actually might make sense to just drop one in Frankfurt rather than do an overseas thing, and I think that's probably what we're going to do. We have one in Bordeaux sending there. We're not worried about Western Europe trade node uh, because we're actually collecting trade in Seville, and we've got lots of money going there. We actually have quite a bit. Uh, this trade node is doing fine. Um, we don't need to worry about Tunis. Uh, the Mauritanian coast is all going to the Western Europe trade node. Too bad it doesn't go to Seville, but on the other hand, uh, well, most of it's going to London. And we don't have a merchant here. But the idea is hopefully we pull stuff out of London, but we're not really doing a good job, uh, mostly because we're overextended. I'm wondering if what we should do is actually divert things to Seville where we have so much more control, rather than make a pit stop in London where we really can't compete that well. We've got some trade power and we can run a bunch of ships. Uh, what else? You know what though? I think the best thing to do might actually be just to direct Frankfurt into Antwerp and then we can just send more ships to London. There we go. Again, it's not going to do much right now just because we don't have trade power because we're overextended. A minor inconvenience. That's because we're well overextended so we're going to get some of those things. Uh, hopefully we don't get some really, really bad events. While we wait for that to resolve itself. Um, what am I looking for here? Oof. Religious migration expired. Okay, great. I could become the defender of the Catholic faith. Which um, would give me an extra missionary. 
Might not be a terrible idea. Governor in Belgium, they want to keep the governor, so I will do that. And, oh yeah, I don't want to spend to increase my, um, my terrace right now because I want to try to finish or start my last core. I probably should become the defender of the Catholic faith. Although it only happens, uh, until your ruler, like, dies or whatever. And now that I'm doing, ex um, elections, it's actually going to happen quite quickly. So we don't want that. Okay. You can now hold control to box select ships, which is quite nice. People always say, oh, you can do it with alt. No, you can do an alt in uh, Crusader Kings 2, but not in EU 4. All right, a bit of a rebellion. That's not a big, huge stack, though. Take a look at that in a second. Um, let's leave you here. We'll send the 34 stack. And these are no, they're nationalists, so they could actually be a bit of a problem. So, what's this event? Military reform. Ah, uh, we can reform the army and gain 200 military power, plus get morale of the army bonus and cheaper military tech cost. Or the navy, diplo power and diplo tech cost, and get both and split the difference. Well, I don't think I'm going to be upgrading my military tech right now anyway. Although, although, um, it would discount it and help me get a po more powerful uh, military a little bit sooner. But I think what I'm going to do is take the Diplo, uh, because some of these buildings will be quite handy. But also, we could use this to annex our, naval or, um, our vassals. Yeah, I think I'm going to go it that way. We could tech up at 15% discount. We don't have to rush to a, a custom house or a naval base. Naval bases are pretty cool. But we don't have to rush up. Uh, assimilation is nice. And yeah, what I'd really like to do is just annex my things. Yeah, it'll cost me some Republican tradition, but at least we're getting some now. And I'm not as married to a high Republican tradition as I used to be. Oh, more rebel sentiment. We can convert another province. I'm just going to keep converting whichever one is fastest all the time. We're also going to take a look at the harsh treatment screen and see if there's any really cheap provinces that I can just stomp on. Um, doing Ireland probably makes some sense because it'd be a bit of a pain in the butt to get some units over here. We'll do Meath as well, even though it's a little more expensive. Thirty-eight for 10%, yeah, and that's what I'm trying to uh, convert as well, and it's really a pain if you ever get uh, religious rebels, because you can't just accept their demands. You have to fight them. Or accept some sort of uh, conversion, which is not what we want. Except the ones that we actually want to do intentionally, so we're going to do that. The black flag. Oh, there! There's some troops. Herpy derp. Let's sit in Tyrell for now. Battle of Artois was one, okay. And you can go over there as well, just because we are coring that, and I want to make sure that it finishes. Diplom screen. Um, trying to see what else we might be coring over here. Oh, right, I can actually start this core, so let's go ahead and do that. And yes, I will move this army to there. Having an army in a province does re reduce the revolt risk. But also, if a rebellion does spawn on top of your army, they get an automatic sort of crossing penalty, which is really nice. Um, and I don't think they start at full morale either, so they tend to get squished really fast. March is done. Armories are done. Because I needed manpower. War college. More armories. Bam. Nice to be rich, too. And that's what I'll keep doing, uh, because I do have uh, military points sort of to burn, because a tech would be expensive. I'm going, wow, we're going to finish converting everyone really, really fast here. Uh, I'm going to keep building um, military buildings uh, because I want to get more manpower and I would also, I, I don't need the points right now, so it seems like a good way to spend my money. Because I'm persistently low on manpower. My army is mostly made up of mercs and I do have the money for it, so, you know, it's not bad. Blue did expire. Our colony has become self-sufficient, which is great. New Hollandia wants a replacement candidate. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and send a diplomat and hope that that encourages them to colonize a little bit. Speaking of colonizing, I can start a new colony in a second. Or no! Apparently I didn't have a, uh, a colonist in bone. Um, although I could revoke a colonist from somewhere and start a new colony. I have the money, so I may as well hurry it up. Um, 
Oh, I'm looking at the wrong screen. I'm still running extra colonists, too. Tell you what, I'll recall this one, because he's almost done anyway. And send him over to there. Meanwhile, I have all these transport ships. I will move them all over here. Although one of these is actually my trade fleets, which is supposed to be trading in Malacca. Bam. I don't know why it's just sitting there. But we're going to take you, and we take this one merchantman, and bring you over here. Armor array arrived in Bera. Good stuff. All right. And yeah, we're going to wait on that. Uh, Armagnac, we can probably start to integrate you now, maybe? I can start on Baden. Although, once I, Baden will finish almost instantly, and then the other um, my other vassals will be a little bit unhappy because I've annexed someone. So we're going to wait, and we're going to try to do them all in one fell swoop. I guess I gotta merge you guys all again. Oh, these are all transports. Okay, good. Um, so I don't know if we need to keep a military over here anymore. There's no Portuguese. Oh, there's great British presence. Oh, and there is. This is a little bit of Portugal. Okay. I say there's no Portugal Portuguese presence or anything, but apparently there is. That would be another decent island to have grabbed. Actually, we could have just made the move over there, but I think this is going to be fine. You can get off the transport that way. Castilian. It'd be nice to like grab this and like block their ability to send um, a variety of things over here, including like ships later on. We still seriously have a black flag. Right there we do. Anyone else? No, that's it. On that, you can go and dock over here. So yeah, we'll leave an army and but this is an overkill of transports, but what the hell? Tyrrell has been cored. Nice. We lost our colonial enthusiasm. Um and a CB, but we are now below 100% overextension, so we're going to no more crazy bad events. Uh, we are still going to get the issue uh, in those places where there was the minor inconvenience of plus 15 revolt risk, which is certainly uh, less than ideal. Also, uh, rebellions, uh, I guess it was when you were over 100% OE. The rebellions are now scaling based on your overextension, uh, but now that's going to be fine because we're lower, below 100%, so that's fine. Okay. Still the possibility of making a move in India, but right now our trade is bypassing India, generally speaking, or would be, assuming our overextension stopped being quite so ridiculous. Back up to almost 100 as these calculations fluctuate. We've doubled our trade power in Lubeck from 4% to 8% just by improving that. I will repay a loan. I actually forgot that we had loans. Maybe we should focus on just repaying them so that I don't forget them again. There's no actual advantage to repaying them early. Uh, you're still having to pay all the interest. Uh, the the big thing about it is just that you won't forget that you've got a loan going on. Uh, let's do a last conversion. Meanwhile, I'm going to get you to get on a boat and come over here. I have a feeling that our two men may not be able to handle the 13 stack. So, yeah. So we're dropping in how many guys? 15 with no leader? On an aquatic landing? Hmm... Stop here a sec. We're going to definitely give you a leader, if nothing else. Uh, we'll probably just steal one. Uh, you are not very good. You are much better. Um, gain 10 prestige or lose a stability, or pay tons of money. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here so that I'll get enough money to hopefully pay this off without a, without a loan. Might be a little tricky, though. You have to wait two months, basically. I think we're going to end up with a loan regardless. Um, I don't want to lose stability. Because it's, you know, that's going to be worth, depending on exactly where you are, 100 to 200 in min points. I'd rather do this and then spend to offset the inflation from the loan. Because it's less, less in min points. Let's do that. And then we'll reduce some inflation right away. And then the loan will kick in anyway. So close. Maybe I could have waited a month. 
Um, right, leader. You're going to do that, and you're going to get back on the boat, and you are going to come over here and do that, because I think, were we still coring this place? Yeah. I'd rather not uh, cancel that out. Right, so we still have that, but I'm still hoping to integrate my fellows. Got to wait for our reputation to improve everywhere. I could uh, recall this one in uh, Baden, but we may as well keep them ticking along. Um, right, in Tunisia. Oh, we don't have a royal marriage in Tunisia. Let's reestablish that. Civil War there. We got a royal marriage. Great. That's wonderful. Overextension is still ticking away. Conversions, and that's it. We didn't get a pop-up for more places to convert. We're going to get 100% religious unity here. How crazy is that? Man power is recovering. Munster, yeah. All right, saw that coming. So, fleets. I can't remember what our setup is here. It has been a long time since I've played. Um, you are heavies. So, we do have some transports over here, of course. And then the other transport fleet that is moving, and that's it. Anyway, let's split this stack, grab you 13, and then put you 13 in a boat like that. We will have you land in Leinster. And then we're going to do the same thing with these guys. They'll take care of these rebels, and then we'll have to have them help out in uh, in Ireland. This is, um, we don't have these guys protectorated, do we? No. Meath gets heresy, more revolt risk, lowered tax, or we could reverse course, improve our missionary strength more, and it does hurt our tech cost, though. You know what? It's fine. Maybe we'll leave some people over there. Hopefully I've got enough guys. Portuguese patriots will actually be at a half-decent tech group. And what's their leader like? Uh, maybe we can't just do this landing. Um, okay, what kind of rebels do we get over here? Tyronean nationalists. You know what? We'll be able to accept these demands. Um, let's have you dock here. And our other transports. We're going to have you join over there. I think either way we'll probably lose a siege. We don't necessarily need to accept demands. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, we'd probably just lose that if we just dropped on them. So we got money again. We got some more military power, so we can go and build even more armories, perhaps. Let's start with the base ones. So the cheap buildings, or the, the first level buildings, only cost like, what, 50-ish gold, right? Yeah, plus inflation. Um, and 10 power. And the later buildings cost 150 gold and 10 power. So if you're like looking to burn power more than necessarily just money, like that's kind of the way to do it. It's kind of a funny... Thing to look at. So what's my manpower? 175k max now. Um, oh, wow. Manpower is good and I'm really low on manpower. What an event. But army tradition is freaking amazing. It's really, really good. Uh, wait, does army tradition cap out 100? I think it might. And we have a lot of it. Actually, I should replace my uh, general, that crappy general, and just try to gamble for a better one. Um, I will just gain, like, manpower then. That's going to be fine. Uh, so, my, uh, right over here. Let's go in here. Let's... Oh, we don't have the power points for it. And, I mean, he's got lots of maneuver, which counts for something, but, you know, fire is pretty important. Okay, so we'll save up our points, and we'll see if we can go shopping for a better general. God, we're almost at half manpower. How often do you see me with that? It's nuts. Right, we got that random caravel. We'll probably need to build more of a fleet. We're well below our limit, actually, if I recall correctly. Yeah, we're at half our limit, basically. Same thing with our land troops. I did uh, merge some, because at the time it was kind of important. We had no manpower, and we may have needed to fight. But um, it'd be nice to get some now. Oh, look at that. We've got some extra troops just chilling over here, too. We've got troops all over the world. That's a colony. That is not. Here. Just have you merge up, and then... 
it'll be a little bit less stuff to take care of. All right, well, that's a 30-minute episode. So uh, fun to experiment with uh, Res Publica a little bit now. We're going to play a few more episodes. And I'm still not sure if we're going to play this straight through to the end. We'll have to play it by ear. Maybe we want, you know, a giant Netherlands or not. But uh, part of me is really itching to just start a new series. So we'll see how it goes. But for now, we continue. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.